but I had made a submission last time about the uh, speaker's conduct when he's faced with emotion. And my lord, one of the things your lordships have been considering is the problem about whether the, those observations of the earlier judgment of Nabam Rabia, whether they are to be read as a speaker being denuded of power to act, but he is being subject to a code of conduct. It's, one can perhaps put it more on the manner of exercise of power, as I submitted last time. Yes. Rather than absence of power, because there are 50 other functions which a speaker has to do. A speaker has administrative jobs. He, he, is, he has to run the assembly. There may be other other things going on. Surely, Malad, one cannot suggest that the speaker must sit at home and sit it out till his motion is heard. There is some check and balance within the system, and your lordships have in the statute compilation the Maharashtra Assembly rules, and I believe there are similar rules in other assemblies too. Your lordships have rule 11, which gives the time limit of 15 days. And my, lord, my respectful submission is it might be, it may not be really feasible to say in black and white in what circumstances the speaker should or should not act. Normally, a person who is under a, a significant challenge should not act. If, my lord, a speaker, look at our, I mean, it's now academic, but the reason why we went to court is the speaker did not even give the period which you have to give for a reply under the rules. And it could be that the numbers were such that the speaker may have lost, most probably lost his uh, position. Because Malad, one thing I do want to re restate, I said this the other day, we know paragraph three about split has been deleted. One of the things which did prevail when your lordships upheld this law in Quixote as not being an anti-descent but anti-defection law is that if there's a sizable number of breakaways, then it is not a defection. Then it is excessive because there has, one has to balance the right to dissent With but Mr. Sarve, then what is the sizable, sizable number of... That's not for your lordships. The but then you'll be bringing in split by the back door. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm not inviting the court to do that. I'm saying something very different, Marad. In fact, my respectful submission is your lordship has to take it as you find it. There was a provision for a split which has now been deleted. So therefore, the plain consequence is that a split goes away. No, as I'm a sorry, Manal, I'm not saying really. to the contrary. Till so that whether it's a one-third or a two-third or... Uh... Is this to be ignored today? That's irrelevant. If you are found to have crossed the uh, line, it's no, it doesn't help you to say that the, the number of people who crossed the line was more than one-third. But whether that law, whether Kyoto, because Mr. Sibal also said maybe someday Kyoto will have to be relooked, maybe even on this Kyoto will have to be relooked, because has this law crossed the line and become an anti dissent law is something your lordship will consider if the law is challenged. <coughs> because one thing, my lord, which your lordships would consider, yes, we know there is a problem about political morality, but that problem is on both sides of the fence. It cannot be. Once you're in, you lock the barn doors. To say that a person becomes chief minister, if his entire legislative party is rebelling against him, you must wait till he goes to the election commission, then they get the party split at the election commission level. And then what happens? I go to the election commission and say, we are the real party. You come and have all your legislative members disqualified because no split now. 
So you come to the speaker and say, all my entire party has rebelled, throw everybody out. I'm the sole person, you can't remove me from chief ministership. Well, this is surely not what the law was meant to be. So all I'm saying is, yes, we know there is a problem. But, and the legislature has tried to address it by bringing in the 10th schedule to the extent it has. But this overstatement saying, because this is so, you must unscrabble everything, you must transfer everything to Supreme Court, a resigned chief minister must be asked by a mandamus to come back and take office, or his uh, except of his resignation must be set aside, God knows Malad, what sort of reliefs have been asked for. So Malad, my respectful submission is, and even as far as the governor is concerned, the solicitor is addressing your lordship. But since one of the issues does arise, is challenged to the governor's order. My Lord, one thing which Bomai has laid down and laid down very clearly is that floor tests are not to be in Raj Bhavan, floor tests are to be in the assembly. Head counting is not to be done in Raj Bhavans because that is the root of a major evil. Whenever there is a question mark on the ability of the chief minister to command confidence of the house, the governor must call for a vote of confidence. The governor must not entertain people in Raj Bhavan and do head counting. Now that's the law your lordships have laid down to prevent politics from entering Raj Bhavan, if at all that is possible. So, Malad, when the governor calls for a vote of confidence, why should a chief minister continue in office even one day if he doesn't command the numbers? So, yes, there is a problem of horse trading. But you are also leading a party. If there is a problem within your party, the problem is not only to be resolved in courts. So, Malad, my respectful submission is getting into this thicket is inviting your lordships to depart from established constitutional principles which are judicially manageable. We have judicially manageable standards. Your lordships have said, floor tests are the test. Let, let democracy play out in the floor of the house. That's a, that's a, that's a lord star of uh, this law. The governor did nothing wrong in calling by for a floor test. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, my Yes, come sir. Yes, yes. Yes. So, my respectful submission is on the three steps. As far as the Nabam Rabia judgment is concerned, it, first of all, that question doesn't arise and it's not a matter which is free from difficulties. But if your lordships do are persuaded to get into Malad relooking that judgment, then there has to be some discipline. And that discipline can be brought in by a doctrine which we understand, and that's abuse of power. So, Malad, it's not absence of power, it's the manner of its exercise, and if in the facts of a case, you find that there is abuse of power, a speaker has jumped the gun and done something which he shouldn't have. The courts are there to remedy it. So, Malad, that is the submission as far as Navam Rebiya is concerned. Now, Malad, one other question which had come up, which I mentioned and your lordships are also seeing. Can a mandamus issue 
to the governor to decide. But uh, that actually stands answered because although it had been referred to five judges, a later judgment answers it uh, based on the observations in Rana. But on first principles also, uh, there should be no difficulty if your lordship sees the Kihoto judgment on this. The problem which is sort of the genesis of this submission is paragraph 54 of Kihoto Manor. It's in the compilation. PDF page 111. The judgments compilation. Manor. And the limitation on judicial review comes out of paragraph 7. And the question really is, uh, 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 in, in one sense, a mundane question. What is the meaning of the phrase uh, queer timid action or an interlocutory intervention, which your lordships have said is not permissible? 54. Para 50 formula. So, second compilation or third? Second one. Second. Second compilation. Judgment 2. Yeah, judgment 2. Uh, PDF page 111. Oh, that's at least the page which I have. Oh, Volume 1. Yeah. Yeah. Volume 1. Serial Volume 1. one. Guru. Guru. Volume what? Serial number two is Guru Gobind Bas. Kihoto. Yeah, it's serial number six. It is compilation volume one. Okay. PDF page number. PDF is page hundred and eleven. Para fifty four. And this is Malad discussing paragraph 7. Para 55, Malad cites, in fact, the well known rule in Mask in Company that this has to be strictly construed. And once your lordship has held, that the speaker is a quasi-judicial tribunal, then Malad, this has to apply in that sense. If your Lordship sees para 62, in the present case, though the amendment does not bring directly any change in the language of 136, 226 and 227. However, in effect, para 7 curtails the operation of the articles in matters falling in 10 schedule there is a change in so and so within the meaning of clause b of 368 to para 7 therefore attracts uh, the passage having regard to the introduction of so and so the 10 schedule in effect bring about a change in 136. <coughs> so it is in this context that your lordship said you cannot have a quatimate injunction in para 54. Now, today, Malad law has moved far ahead, including Malad the proposition that even by constitution amendment, you cannot water down 226. We have had the later cases. But Malad, I don't see this as a problem on the issue which your lordship is considering. The later judgment where Justice Nariman has gone into the definitions. A three judge bench, my lord, 2020 SCC online, SC page 55. In this very bundle, your lordship will find it at page 1324. It's 1324. What's the course title, Mr. Salve? It is Kesham, Meghchandra Singh, and Speaker of Manipur. Oh, 
bookmark 32. Some. There are two, 31 and 32, both. I think this is 32. 31 was the first one. Right. 31. 31. 31. Yes. It's a bench of three learned judges, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have. What your lordships did in this case, because here this question came up, your lordship said we have referred it, but without noticing that the matter already stands answered by Rana. And the relevant passage straight away, if I may cut to the chase, or not, if your lordships come straight to uh, page 13, 32 PDF, para 20, citing from Rana. In fact, Manot, if your lordship turns to page 13, 31, From para 15, your lordship starts citing Rana's judgment. And at the extract in para 17 of this judgment, which says after referring to the court's decision in Quixote and Ravi Nayak, in para 22, the court held. Uh, then in para your lordships extract para 22 suffice it to say decision of the speaker on 6 september was not immune from challenge before the high court in 226 227 the court then went on to hold then para 25 on the scheme of 102 and 191 of the 10th schedule the determination of the question of split or merger cannot be divorced from the motion before the speaker seeking the disqualification of member members therefore not possible to exceed that under 10 schedule speaker has an independent power to decide that there's been a split or merger as contemplated by para 3 and 4 the part to recognize a separate group in parliament may rest with the speaker on the basis of rules of business but that is different from saying that the power is available under the 10th schedule to the constitution independent of a claim being determined or a number of members had incurred disqualification. To that extent, the decision of the speaker on the hand cannot be considered to be an order in terms of the 10th schedule. The speakers failed to decide the question he was called upon to decide by postponing a decision thereon. Well, this is the starting point of the proposition. Therefore, there is a failure to do your duty. It's a tribunal which fails to do the duty. Then, Malad, in the next para, about uh, six or seven lines, Malad, there is a line which is underscored and it says, the failure on the part of the speaker to decide the application seeking a disqualification cannot be said to be merely in the realm of procedure. It goes against the very constitutional scheme of adjudication contemplated by the 10th schedule read in the context of 102 and 191 of the Constitution. It also goes against the rules framed in that we have and the procedure he was expected to follow. And then, my lord, your lordships, if your lordships turn to page 1332, the extracts in para 20 of your lordship's judgment, your lordship start by saying the court then adverted to the scope of judicial review being limited as was decided in Quixote as follows. And then, my lord, after those passages in Quixote, Para 40 is set out, Malad, at the foot of that page, which says, coming now to the case in hand, it is clear speaker in the original order left the question of disqualification undecided. Thereby, he failed to exercise the jurisdiction conferred on him in Para 6. Such a failure to exercise jurisdiction cannot help to be covered by the shield of Para 6 of the uh, schedule. He has also proceeded to accept that a split being merely on a claim. He has entered no finding of the split in the original party was prima facie proved or not. The action was apparently based on his understanding of his ratio of Nayak. He misunderstood the ratio. Now that we have approved the reasoning and approach of Jagjit Singh and the ratio is clear, it has to be held. Speaker has committed an error which goes to the root of the matter. So fundamentally, even a limited judicial review has to be interfered with. Therefore, no hesitation in agreeing. In view of our conclusions above, nothing turns on the arguments urged on what were described as significant facts on the alleged belatedness of the amendment to the writ. It is indisputable order was originally subjected to the writ. Speaker specifically refrained from deciding the petition. On our reasoning, clearly, there was an error which attracted the jurisdiction of the High Court in exercise of the power of judicial review. So your lordships have said failure to decide itself is a jurisdictional error which can be corrected under 226. 
reviewed under 226. So this question already stands answered. And then in para 2400, I want to take your lot of time reading it beyond that one definition in blacks. A queer timid is because you fear or you apprehend. Now here there is no fear or apprehension. If a speaker is not deciding something, there is no fear or apprehension. It is, it's an established fact. Then, Malot, para 29 and 32, and then I'm done with this, Malot. Para 29 is at the foot of page 1334. The reading of the decision shows that what was meant to be outside the pale of judicial review in para 110 of Quixote are quiet actions in the sense of injunctions to prevent the speaker from making a decision on the ground of imminent apprehended danger it will be irreparable in the sense that if the speaker proceeds to decide that a person be disqualified, he incurs the penalty of forfeiting his membership of the house for a long period. 110 and 111 of Quixote do not therefore in any manner interdict judicial review in aid of the speaker arriving at a prompt decision as to the disqualification of the provision of the 10th schedule. Indeed, the speaker in acting as a tribunal under the 10th schedule is bound to decide within a reasonable period. What is reasonable will depend on the facts of each case, but absent exceptional circumstances for which there is good reason, a period of three months from the date on which the petition is filed is the outer limit within which the disqualification filed before the speaker must be decided if the constitutional objective of disqualifying persons who infracted the 10th schedule is to be adhered to. This period been fixed keeping in mind that the ordinary life of the Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly of the states is so and so so and so. And then Malot, finally the foot of page 1335 para 32. Malot, after having held all this, please see what your lordships do. It is not possible to accede to Mr. Sibyl's submission that the court issue a writ of quo warranto quashing the appointment of the respondent as a minister of a cabinet led by the BJP government. Mrs. Devan is right in stating that a disqualification under the 10th schedule from being an MLA and consequently minister must first be decided by the exclusive authority in this behalf, namely the Speaker of the Manipur Legislative Assembly. It is also not be possible to accede to the argument that the disqualification petition be decided by this court in these appeals given the inaction of the Speaker. It cannot be said that in the facts of the present case are similar to the Rana case. In the present case, the Legislative Assembly comes to an end in March 22. Unlike the case, uh, uh, unlike in Rana, where the court, but for the court deciding the disqualification, no relief could have been given to the petitioner, etc. The only relief that can be given is that the Speaker be directed to decide the disqualification pending before him within a period of four weeks from the date on which the judgment is intimidated, intimidated to him. Malad, I commend this judgment for your Lordship's acceptance. It's it's sound on principle, it's sound on logic. So, Malad, to close, therefore, I start by saying, Malad, your Lordship is being invited to embark on a journey which is entirely political in nature, Malad. it's a journey without a destination. And that journey is to speculate on what would have happened had a trust vote actually happened. Even in because your lordships have never come to the conclusion and I, I dare say your lordships never will that the pendency of a challenge to somebody is continuing in the house renders that person legally disqualified until he is requalified by dismissal of a disqualification. So those, till your disqualification is decided, you are entitled to participate and vote. Yes, the, the system is not powerless, the courts are not powerless. If you find that a trust vote in fact was vitiated by the participation of a large number of people who three days later were disqualified and what has happened is an abuse of the power and abuse of the constitutional provisions, the courts can always intervene. Now, Malad, today, apart from the 
figures which we have given to your lordships. The admitted position is there were 16 petitions on which notice was issued. And the gap was 58. Now, what would have happened? Forget this 58. Well, this is also a coalition government. God knows what would have happened when the trust board, if it had at all taken place. So, well, to invite your lordships to assume like a legal fiction that if the trust vote had happened and if these 20 had been left out or these 32 had been left out and then the balance would have had a change of heart or something else would have happened and then all these votes would have gone and our coalition partners would have supported and so and so would have won the trust vote. Well, it is a journey which your lordships would not embark on. Now, if I'm right there, then well, nothing survives in the first part of this case. The second part of this case is swearing in of Eknath Shinde. Now, well, what did the governor do wrong? A chief minister has resigned. He has to accept his resignation. Another person comes and says, I represent a party on which elections are, uh, um, I'm, I represent a majority in the house. He goes. He has well, won the majority. Now, if somebody says that he has won the majority by abuse of power because disqualification petitions are pending, those are matters yet to be resolved. How many numbers, how many are pending, what has happened to the disqualification? And I, I do remember a lot before the former Chief Justice, because the tide had turned, as they say, and there were cross-disqualification petitions against those who voted against the present incumbent. And they did also not, uh, want the speaker to decide those disqualifications. So virtually there was, well, I, I remember in one of the hearings, the idea was don't aggravate things, let things lie. That's why things have not been decided. Your Lordship will direct in whatever reasonable time the speaker will decide now all, all pending disqualifications. If somebody is dissatisfied, you have your remedies under Article 226 if the speaker gets it wrong. That's all that, that remains in this case now at this stage is my respectful submission. So that's one broad submission. The second is Malad. There is no occasion because this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The second Malad I was submitting, even this Navam Rabia Malad is, is a very uh, thorny issue. But if your lordships do get into it, then I have made my submission. Thirdly, Malad, there is no impediment in issuing any direction to the speaker to decide. And that's really where this case must now end. Your lordship will direct the speaker within a defined period of time to Malad, uh, dispose of all pending cases and the matter must end there. That, Malad, is the submission. Unless there's anything else I can assist your lordship with. Thank you, Mr. Sarai. Thank you.